So our guests are here. All right, we are live. So hi, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Hello. It's afternoon here in Ontario. So I think it's still okay. Morning over so good afternoon. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start by introducing myself. So I'm Preeti Jaria, vestibular physical therapist practicing in two provinces in Canada, British Columbia and Alberta. And I'm going to hand over the introduction to Lauren now. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren Wooten. I'm a vestibular physiotherapist in Ontario. Um, and today we are going to talk about um, PPPD. So we also have who I'd like to introduce um, a very special guest today. Her name is Leslie, and she is uh, someone who has experienced the condition of PPPD. Um, we're so glad to have her join us today. Um, to Thank share you for her having us. <laughs> yes, you're welcome to share her experiences. So what we're going to do to start out is we're going to, Preeti and I are going to talk a little bit about what it is, um, uh, who gets it, how it's treated, uh, and then we'll go into just listening to Leslie's story and, and what she's gone through and where she's at now. So stay tuned for that part. That's, that's going to be really interesting. Okay. So let's start by talking about what is triple PD. So Lauren, please give your inputs on this. Sure. So um, last week, we or two weeks ago, we did an Instagram live on BPPV. PPPD is sounds <laughs> kind of similar, but it's completely different. Um, so it, it, but it kind of flows well because BPPV is an, a, kind of an initial event, um, a vestibular condition and PPPD is something that can actually, uh, um, occur after you have BPPV. Um, it, it has many different triggers. BPPV can be one of them. So we'll, we'll get to that, but basically PPPD stands for persistent postural perceptual dizziness. Uh, and it is a, um, it, it has many other names as well. So we'll just name a couple of things um, because over the years, more and more has been learned about it. Um, and so it's sort of name has sort of morphed. Um, it has been known to be called phobic postural vertigo, um, space motion discomfort, visual vertigo. Um, some people now call it 3PD is a little easier to say than PPPD. Uh, so that's that's sort of some uh, chronic subjective dizziness is is sort of the most recently um, used term uh, before PPPD. Uh, so that's some other other um, things that it is called. But basically what it is, is a condition where someone experiences non spinning vertigo or non vertiginous vertigo. It's it's a type of vertigo or dizziness where um, you don't feel that kind of room spinning sensation necessarily. It's more of a of a, of a, a dizziness, a floating, um, a feeling that the environment is moving somewhat, not necessarily spinning unsteadiness. Um, the key is that it's often made worse by movement or by visual stimuli. So um, if you're kind of laying still and, and calm and relaxed, your symptoms won't be necessarily bad. You may still have some symptoms in those situations, but it all it, it, it is worsened by movement. Uh, and the important thing to know about this that um, that is interesting is that Often when you go to your doctor, they will want to run some tests, sometimes imaging, sometimes hearing and audiological exams um, and those types of things. And oftentimes those reports will come back normal. Um, so they will say, oh, great news. Your MRI is normal. Great news, you know, and, and that kind of thing. But um, a lot of people will find that uh, that's frustrating to hear because you know that you don't feel normal. Right. So. Um, it is a it is a type of functional neurological disorder and what that means is that everything structurally structurally looks fine in the in the head and in the ear but there's some sort of communication problem happening in the brain um, things are not being messages are not being sent properly or received properly by different parts of your body uh, and so a good analogy would be to think of it as um, your brain as a computer and there's a software problem in the computer not necessarily a hardware everything looks like it's all connected and working there's nothing broken however things are not communicating properly does that make sense absolutely yeah yeah so um yeah why don't you tell us a little bit Preeti, about how someone would be diagnosed with this 
So there are specific diagnostic criteria. So Barani Society, which is international society for all the vestibular disorders and all the neurologists, neuroautologists, and ENTs are in that in those panel and the scientists as well. So they have come up with the diagnostic criteria. So the diagnostic criteria for this is there should be at least three months or more of this persist like non-vertiginous dizziness, unsteadiness sensation. Um, it is uh, followed by an event. So there will be a triggering event. And then after that, uh, if your dizziness is lasting three months or more, then it is considered as to be positive for the uh, triple PD. It can wax in vein in severity. So it can become a little bit better, but would not come to a baseline. And it can worsen with the uh, uh, you know, visual stimuli if you change your position, so upright posture, active and passive movements, and especially moving or complex visual stimuli will trigger your symptoms. Mm -hmm. And there is no other organic cause for this problem. So like Lauren said, your MRI, your CT scan, and all those things would be normal. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the in terms of the triggering events, it can be 70% of the neuroautologic disorder. So like BPPV, vestibular migraine, um, uh, then vestibular neuritis, anything. It can proceed with all these events. And then there is 30% chances of if you're having anxiety disorders, it can, uh, it can come after that as well. So like an acute event, and then it comes after that. Yeah, <clears throat> so, so exactly. So what you're saying is that um, you know, or what I see often in my practice is that a lot of people will develop PPPD after having had vestibular neuritis or, mm -hmm. you know, a really bad vestibular migraine, um, or something that caused this terrible disruption and balance and, and, mm -hmm. uh, causes this terrible, you know, it can be a spinning vertigo, so it can be BPPV, right? So it can be something that caused them to feel this awful vertigo sensation. They get over that, um, eventually, you know, in, in a little bit of time or a lot of time, but they're left with, um, developing the PPPD. So that's that 70% of the time it's from an inner ear problem. And then, you know, the other 30% of the time it can be, as you said, more psychological triggers such as anxiety. Sometimes, um, I have seen a few of my patients have PPPD be triggered by a panic attack. So if, mm -hmm. if, uh, if a panic attack um, causes, uh, sometimes people will experience a panic attack and be extremely dizzy during their panic attack. Uh, and then it sort of sets off this um, cascade of turning into PPPD. Yeah. So there is a initial event, we call this as acute dizziness crisis. After that acute dizziness crisis, our body is very good in adapting. So there'll be an acute adaptation wherein you will become a little bit visually dependent, environmental vigilance will come, and then there's a lot of guarding. Uh, this is true for most of our uh, inner ear problem patients, okay? So if they have inner ear disease, you will have this acute adaptation. Now, most often the brain will like to adapt it and you will go into a regular adaptation where you'll feel better, there is no problem, and you will recover in whatever, six weeks to six to 12 weeks. But in some population, if you have a predisposing factor, so like if you have an anxious personality, then the brain will go into the maladaptation, okay? And that maladaptation is like high threat uh, responses from your body. And you will have this persistent body vigilance, you know? And then there is something called a sensory misweighting. So you will rely too much on your vision. So visual dependency would occur. And then lastly, it will lead to this persistent dizziness and instability feeling, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so exactly. So people will, um, you know, have this vigilance, as you say, where they are afraid to move, afraid to go, mm -hmm. out, um, afraid to go and, out and afraid to do, you know, things because they their brain is saying anything that's causing any of these symptoms is on high alert. Uh, and uh, and so people will often stop doing those things. It, and that's that's normal. That's a normal way to respond is that, you know, yeah. you stop doing things that cause you either pain or dizziness or discomfort. Uh, but um that causes this sort of vicious cycle of, you know, you're not moving. So, um, so now any sort of small movements, you become hypersensitive to basically. Yes. So 
let's quickly go through about the treatments that we can, um, <clears throat> what are the proposed treatments for triple PD? And then we will talk about, talk with Leslie. Yeah, so there are, the great news, this is a treatable condition. It, you know, it is a very well studied condition now. Um, mm -hmm. I would say in the past 10 years or so, it's become more and more and more well known uh, and understood, which is, which is wonderful. Um, and there's lots of treatments that can help. So um, what we do, um, Preeti and I as vestibular therapists, is we focus on exercises to help um, basically habituate your, you, your body to movement again. So as we said, there's this vigilance, there's a lot of stiffening, there's a lot of, um, you know, you, you're not moving your eyes much, you're not moving your neck much, you're not moving your body much to try to avoid these sensations. So we slowly and gradually get you doing some of those exercises again, very cautiously to try not to trigger too many symptoms, uh, but we get you used to moving the, all of those muscles again um, and, uh, and coordinating them all again, your vision, your head, your eyes, all of that. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times what happens is that people become very focused on on uh, very focused or their brain becomes very used to using their vision for balance. So as we've said before, there, you know, your body uses your vision, your inner ear and your sense of touch to help you balance and keep your balance as you move. Um, so what happens is with people with PPPD is they become hyper focused on using their vision to be able to sense where they are in the world. And so our exercises tend to um, take vision out of it. A lot of my exercises that I give, I'll give um, with eyes closed. Eyes so closed, close, yeah. yeah, closing your eyes to do even just starting out with breathing, touching, you know, sensory re-weighting re basically and trying to use um, your other sensory sy symptoms and, and not your vision so much. Um, uh, a lot of weight shifting exercises to get you used to putting weight through different um, body parts again. Uh, and then we do go into some visual exercises as well, um, if if needed, based on our assessment, whether we think you need to be doing visual exercises, getting your eyes moving with your head and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then after that, whatever uh, uh, Lauren has described after that, I generally like to ask the patient to go do the functional activities. So if driving is a trigger for them, then I will slowly get them back to driving just around the neighborhood, quiet place, nothing crazy not much traffic or going to grocery store. So these are all therapeutic exercises, functional exercises that we teach them for desensitizing um, their dizziness. And the other part, so there are three prongs for uh, triple PD management. Sorry, actually four, I should say. So first is education. So understanding what is happening to you is very important and understanding that it is treatable, it can be managed, you can get better. This is very, very important for our clients to understand that. The second part is what uh, Lauren described is vestibular rehabilitation therapy, especially focused on habituating these dizzy sensation. The third part is the medications, which our doctors are very, very well, well versed with that. And as physiotherapists, we can't talk much about medications, but yes. Some of the medications can help these patients. And the third part can be very important is cognitive behavioral therapy. Right, Lauren? Yeah, absolutely. So as you said, you know, medication, it, it's not part of everybody's um, uh, um, journey, but it can be really helpful, I find, in people um, to try to sort of reset things. It doesn't mean you're going yes. to be on medications for the rest of your life. Um, mm -hmm. and, and people often say, get nervous when they hear anti-anxiety medications or depression medications, um, because those are the types of medications that that are generally prescribed at first. Um, it doesn't mean that you have anxiety or depression. Uh, the way that I like to explain it um, is that, you know, your dizziness ba and balance centers in your brain um, are very close in proximity to the areas that cause depression and anxiety and emotion. So it's just that those medications are acting in a similar place in your brain, not necessarily a similar, um, you know, um, response. So that's why you'll, mm -hmm. your doctor may prescribe those type of medications. Um, but that's certainly like Preeti said, we, you know, we're not trained in medication prescription or, or use. So, uh, but we will often refer back to the doctor if we think that's a, that's um, something that needs to be done. And then, like you said, the 
psychological therapy. So I think as physiotherapists, we tend to um, do a lot of that because we have time to chat with our patients and 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 do a little. Not that we're trained in therapy, you know, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy necessarily, but um, sometimes we'll notice that you know people do need that extra um, step of of seeing someone to talk about their um, mm-hmm. either past traumas or um, or learning how to kind of um, cognitively be able to manage and cope with these things. Yeah. And then also sleep will be very important for them. So sleep management, lots of sleep hygiene, and lots of relaxation techniques, various types. It can be grounding, it can be surface orientation, meditation apps, uh, uh, just body scanning, whatever yeah. works for them. That is very that will be that will also play a very important role in the management of uh, triple PD. Uh, yeah. There are also something called as distraction apps, which you can brain games so if you can distract yourself from that constant dizzy sensation for two minutes you will be starting to create the neuroplastic change in your brain Mm. so using these distracted distraction apps can be very very helpful for these patients yeah yeah absolutely all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to um move on to chatting with leslie actually i will mention one website that i've come across recently that has been super helpful in um describing um, this condition, PPPD, is called neurosymptoms.org. Um, mm-hmm. So I'll put that in the chat um, on on Facebook because that's what I have access to right now. But that is a great website if you want some more information and they have some um, awesome um, kind of diagrams and whatnot uh, about I'll, that. I'll do that on Instagram. Great. Neurosymptoms.org. Um, for more information. And then if you guys have any questions in that are watching live right now, please drop them in the chat and we're happy to answer them at the end or throughout. Um, yeah. uh, uh, there are a couple that have come up on Facebook here, but maybe we'll we'll see if we have time at the end to answer those. If not, I'll answer them via um, text later. Um, so, Leslie. Hello. Um, yes. So, Leslie, I guess we'll jump right into it. What is your story um, with... PPPD and, and your vestibular journey. Go ahead. Okay. And and do I have a, is there a specific time? Because I know we're limited and I won't I would say we're going to try to keep it to, to half an hour. So if you can be, if you can try to, um, you know. In a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, I want to say thank you very much for asking me to participate in this. My thing, I say it often enough to people, if I can help one person a day. Awesome. I've done my job. <laughs> Um, because I found it very isolating uh, initially with this, very terrifying. Um, I had thoughts not to kill myself, but saying, I cannot live this way. Because when I have this happened to me on uh, May 30th, uh, 2019, I was at work and I just went, I just was at a table, just doing something, no warning, nothing. And I just fell over to my right ambulance came. We all thought I was having a stroke. Um, I'm 59. I was absolutely physically fit. I was a gym buff. Um, I was, I'm finding that I was burning energy. I had a lot of stress in my life. So talking about the mental health component is huge Mm -hmm. because a lot of that I feel is a huge underpinning of what's actually happened to me, brought me where I am today and how I've made a huge shift to manage this without medications because I can't take medications because I have underlying issues with my liver, my heart, nothing seems to jive. So the medication part is a two edged sword, but we'll get to that. Um, There's a place for it for sure. But in my case, it's not anywhere for me. And it's actually in a way better for me because I can now focus a different way with neuroplasticity that you've mentioned. Cognitive behavioral therapy is number one. I went through that. Uh, And I have books on all kinds of books on stuff. Um, So I had this at work and I never went back. (laughs) I had to forcibly retire. It's the most terrifying part of my life because I wasn't ready. That's three and a half years ago. Um, I didn't have that plan B. Almost lost my house. Uh, You really know who your friends are. (laughs) It's hard to explain what's going on with you when the doctors can't explain what's going on with you. Um, being shunted, as you say, to different people, times where I'd be laying on the floor crying, paralyzed, 
afraid to move because if I moved, you described it, you're just, you trigger everything. And just the basis of P, 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 D itself, it, you know, it's, if you break down each word, it tells you exactly it's persistent. It's postural. It's how you move. It's perceptional and it's dizziness. Basically my own movements make me dizzy. And I call, I refer to my PPPD, triple PD, whatever, as the hangover. Because my initial diagnosis was, it's the hangover that never goes away. <laughs> or, but it does in time when you work through it. Um, my initial diagnosis was uh, neuritis. And then my mm -hmm. doctor said, well, maybe it's labyrinthitis. Well, let's send you to this person, that person. Blah, blah. So hunting, spending a lot of time, as my doctor called it, perseverating, which is persevering, digging. My job was a library <laughs> assistant. So what do I do? Research. Of course, now I can't read because everything's distorted and causes looking at the screens. You'll notice I look away a lot because I can't look at the screens too much. Um, so it was the hardest journey I've ever been on. And I've broken my back. I've broken a lot of bones and had a lot of setbacks in life, um, physical and mental setbacks. But this one is the core for, for sure, because you don't see it coming. It's just bam, and your entire life changes. I'm a person who is very physically active. I have ADHD that may come across. Um, and with that, basically, hyper, hyper, going to the gym, doing everything, and now I'm trapped in a body that can't move. Mm -hmm. And it's been hell. Can I say that? Yes. <laughs> it's been excruciatingly yes. difficult. Um, very demoralizing, depressing. Um, and you go through those stages of grief repeatedly because you know with grief it's you you're hit on sadness one day then you're angry the next and it took a long time for me to come to the key acceptance mm -hmm. this is the new me mm -hmm. I'm not who I was I've had to let go of that person to a degree and I'm going to work on getting some of that back and be better be a yeah. different person with different goals and aspirations I don't drive to this day because I can't do a full legal head check. I, um, the grocery store is a huge challenge, but now I've got that down. Walking some days is way better than others. Some days I can do it to the end of the street. Other days I can go for miles. So you just find other ways to adapt. Mm -hmm. um, the vestibular exercise is the best thing. Get a vestibular rehabilitation physiotherapist who understands what triple PD is. Because I went to one who was had been in the biz for 20 years. She sat and read the book I took to her <laughs> through my whole appointment and she didn't she'd never heard of it well that's the wrong person for me i need somebody who gets it and that's the whole point a lot of people who have this uh disorder or these vestibular disorders they can't it's hard to find the medical care that even the medical care that gets it let alone your family members your co-workers your any supports don't bother with people who can't support you this is the time you need everybody who can and will support you and uh get you the help you need and keep fighting keep advocating for yourself i did <laughs> i'm still mm -hmm. going yeah so. yeah so thank you leslie um what can you move on to kind of you know where you're where you're at now and what kind of treatments you've found the most helpful over the last few years of all of the research and, and reading and trial and error that you've done um the uh facebook pages are great because it's support to a degree I'm just going to kind of pick randomly here. You can also get sucked into the vortex. And you, you know, um, it's a lot of repeat, repeat, repeat. Because I reach out to a lot of people. I've got a, a nice person in, in Japan who's actually a doctor. Um, and she she can't even get help for herself. And she's a doctor. And she doesn't understand it. So that kind of tells you mm. how it's, it's not um, known enough. It's not... Um, as people aren't assisted enough with these conditions. There definitely needs to be more education and, and it's growing. There's a lot of, you know, you get the occasional actor or golfer or whoever, there's a number of people who've had vestibular issues and they're maybe starting to speak out about it. So it needs to grow more in education for sure. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the ADD tip gets me off topic. That's okay. No, no, <laughs> the, the, question, that's okay. the question about is, are there any, um, I know you mentioned vestibular therapy, um, you know, support groups, cognitive therapy, any other treatments or like oh, yes. tricks you have for people yeah. that are watching that are dealing with this? Uh, meditation, which for someone like me, it's almost impossible. And when you're feeling, but I'm good at it now. 
And it mm-hmm. usually takes you about 10 minutes to just get to that calm phase. And that's okay because it's worth it when I get there. I just feel it. Um, neuroplasticity that we talked about. I often tell people, think about anything but the symptoms. Think about the sky. If you can look at the sky, think about the cat. Think about doing art. Think about writing. Think about yeah. listening to music, doing the dishes. Yeah, all exactly. the distraction Boy techniques. For anything, get out in nature. Even yep. if you, I used a cane for months, um, but then I ditched it because someone said, get rid of that cane. You don't need it. And they were right because you become dependent on crutches and canes and, mm-hmm. and things. And it's very easy to fall into the um, the weakness, the, the oh, woe is me, but you can't. You've got to fight it. You really have to look at where you want to be, focus on what you want, not what you're actually feeling. And, and believe it, I didn't believe it would work. And lo and behold, it works. Yeah. So. Yeah, so you're you're a lot better than where you were. I think you've told me, you know, you're not back to your old self, definitely. But you're what what would you say? You know, where would you say you are compa- now compared to where you started? When I first started, I was this close to suicidal. I was mm-hmm. on the floor. I was crying. I was terrified. I remember one time in particular laying in bed and I was locked. I was just laying there like this for four hours that's like no life it was i was just so afraid to move and panic and i have an anxiety disorder previous to this so that fed into it um and i i just i was hopeless and now very slowly and i went through four vestibular rehabilitation physiotherapists until i found lauren's this group here uh your organization and haley was super helpful and the key to me was getting a good diagnosis. And you are the, you are the key to that. You have that lovely online free downloadable chart. So I said, what the heck? I'm going to ask about that. And I filled it out. And I was so focused on um, triple PD because somebody had mentioned it to me and I'd never heard about it. And then when I sent this to Lauren and we talked about it, I remember you saying, did you look at the box above the vestibular migraines? And I hadn't even noticed that I'd circled every single thing. And I'm like, oh my God, I didn't, because I was still looking at the other. Took all this to Ottawa. She started treatment with me right away. Uh, Took this to Ottawa, to the Ottawa Dizzy Clinic, where I was referred a year and a half before with COVID, everything slowed right down. Um, And they said, absolutely, that's what you have. Bingo, you're on the mark. Perfect. So now once I had the diagnosis, a decent for sure diagnosis, treatment could be now tailored to my specific needs. And that so Leslie, did, were you diagnosed with vestibular migraine as well? Yes. Okay. Which I had okay. no clue. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Apparently mm. I had silent migraines for decades. Looking back now, I realize it because I don't get headaches. Mm-hmm. I get all the other the neck and, 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 um, auras and, and different things but i had no clue that there was even yeah. such a thing yeah, yeah it was yeah. all news to me thank you laura <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna put the link um to the chart on here because i've had someone ask for it so mm-hmm. uh, it's gonna be in the facebook chat here and then um i can't get it on the instagram right now but what you can do is just go to my profile and then um go to my my bio which will link you to my website and you can get it from my website. So um, yeah, yeah that's a very good chart, chart Lauren. Lauren. Hey, thank you. And thank then you. the next, like I, I send this, it's an email I send out to people and they say, what do you do? Cause you don't take medication. So it's like my toolkit of the things I do. I have something uh, called yeah. hot, hot pocket, which is a wet cloth all rolled together and wet heat absorbs. This will get your neck moving and loosen you up. And mm-hmm. the worst thing to do is freeze like I did for a year and a half get moving and do that with a vestibular physiotherapist because there was a point when Haley, your, your uh, co-worker, mm-hmm. um, she had me laying down. This is, I do it all virtually because that's how Lauren offers it to lay down on my side and to just open up. I couldn't, I couldn't even go to here and I was in agony. And eventually within two weeks I was opening all the way and Wonderful. that completely changed my life was getting mobility back in my neck and shoulders. I still have mm-hmm. pain. I don't get the, the stiff, like, look, I can kind of bobble my head a little bit. And I'm very, still a little vigilant, but most times I forget. And I just kind of, I do. Like, I'm used to turning the body, right? 
but mm. now I can lay on my side and just open right up and to get to breathe, to be able to breathe and loosen all these muscles who have, they've just tightened because they're in protective mode, but you need to allow them to work. And then your eyes will catch up. You just have to slowly raise your baseline and train how to get there. Um, there's tons of books, counseling. You know what? You can't dump on your family the whole time. That's not their job. And they don't necessarily understand. Find somebody mm -hmm. who deals with chronic pain issues, chronic mm -hmm. issues. Um, counseling has been A1. The, a good pillow, a little tiny towel under your neck rolled up at night just gives you that support you need. I take it to the dentist because I can't lay in that chair. Who can lay in those chairs? Um, washing my hair before the hairdresser because there's no way I'm going in that sink. Yeah, that's um, a good tip. Meditation. Good um, one. Mm -hmm. uh, regular exercise. I don't care if it's a bad day. I'm out there walking. I may not go as far, but you have to because it's mentally and physically stimulating for your body. Oh, I, um, I, I just have to say, I see B3 therapy just joined in. That's Haley. So um, hi, Haley. Haley, you just joined, but, <laughs> but um, you've gotten a few shout outs here from Leslie about how wonderful you were in her journey. So. You, you got me a long way, Haley. <laughs> Thank you. Um, quality walking shoes. Your balance is everywhere and it starts at your feet. Not only your head, but I have excellent ankle support in my running shoes. I have Saucony shoes. I go special fitted with orthotics because I'm getting old. But those shoes keep me from tipping as well. They, they allow me to walk and I wear them out because <laughs> I just do. And you can see the rub marks from where my foot rubs because I have bad balance, right? Well, that's just par for the course. It's not going to stop me. Um, the gay stabilization exercises, resting, comfortable pillow or the rolled up towel. It's free. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, deep breathing and grounding meditation. Uh, some people like EFT, which is emotional freedom technique, which is tapping, right? That's another form of meditation and kind of self-help because I do everything, not necessarily on the cheap, but what works, right? Body scans, which you can look up how to do those. And that's kind of checking in where your body's at and actually feeling your body and accepting what's going on, not, anal not studying it and kind of criticizing it. But just allowing yes. your body to know that, all right, this is happening. Let's move on to the next, right? Uh, the hot pack, Voltaren gel, swear by it. Put it on my neck. Um, gentle stretching for neck, back, shoulders, as guided with your physiotherapist. Um, counseling. For me, we've discovered not only the cognitive behavioral, but for me, um, I have complex post-traumatic stress disorder. So that's layer upon layer upon layer. It's not mm. like post-traumatic stress is one incident. For instance, a huge accident or a death or whatever. Mine is, my list is very long. But if that's not ever addressed and looked at, that's going to affect your psyche. It's going to affect your anxiety. It affects everything you do. And I believe fully brought me. It was another push to get me to where I am with vestibular. It all it all pieces together like a beautiful puzzle. Um, not very beautiful, but it's making sense. Uh, limit your use of screen time cell phones get out of your bloody cell phones people uh tv uh stop screen time an hour before bed use that time instead to do a body scan or a meditation your body will thank you it'll get you into a phase where you can rest uh and and uh, limit all the brain activity in the blue light which brings me to the blue light blue blocking glasses mm -hmm. they block the blue light the uh fluorescent lights and whatnot wear them when you are using your devices i should have them on now but you needed to see me. Um, uh, there's a blue light app for your phone. There's a uh, special light bulbs you can get for the house that dim into a more of an amber color because that cuts out a lot of the fluorescent or whatever. Uh, the the F Lux F dot L U X blue light filter software for your computer mm -hmm. at home or your TV. We have that and you're used to it. It starts to look like you're looking through a layer of butterscotch at nighttime, but that's okay. Yeah. You know, everyone's, you got a nice, it, yeah. everyone's got a nice tan at night, a sun visor or hat, depending what you can tolerate. I can't seem to wear a hat per se if it's tight at all, but a visor because I'm very bothered by flickering through the trees. Sunlight or street lights at night are really bad for me for some reason. Another reason I don't drive. Um, I, these are transition lenses that uh, will darken as soon as I hit the light, which is helpful. Uh, supplements uh, or medications as advised by your doctor. So I'm on a fistful of supplements and people say, well, what are you taking? Well, I'm not gonna tell you. 
Mm -hmm. because your doctor needs to tell you because my case is different than yours and, mine and sometimes be different. exactly and sometimes doctors you know may not be versed in supplements either another route that you can take you know physiotherapists you know we're not trained in it but sometimes naturopathic doctors tend to be a good resource for that type of thing so i'll sometimes and mine to mine came from the ottawa disney clinic specifically okay. those yeah. doctors so those are yeah. neurological doctors who yeah. know exactly which doses and which i should be taking yeah. um at night melatonin to help sleep and I just read on the bottle for four weeks only. So four years later, I'm still taking <laughs> melatonin. I think I'll be weaning off of that. But as sleepy tea, that's an all natural. Take mm -hmm. a nice cup of that before bed and it just relaxes you. Um, a good support system, including your medical team, family, coworkers, friends, et cetera. Et cetera. I, I can't be bothered and a lot of people complain with these vestibular disorders that people don't understand or they think they're faking or whatever. Well, guess what? Don't have time for you. I want people that help me. I can I just don't have the energy. I'm fighting already. I don't need to fight with people too. Yeah. And then my, do you want me to do my six P's? Sure. All right. Um, my six P's, which I share with people are positivity, persistence, pacing, prayer, wherever you like to do that, perseverance and patience. Cause this is not necessarily going to go away quickly, but with time and with all of that, it will. Yeah. And then my best 10 two letter words and my mantra if it is to be, it is up to me. <laughs> I love that. The, and doctors that's kind of the doctors can't necessarily fix you, but they can guide you. So you guide have to you. do yeah. it. So if you guys want to type that in, if it is to be, it is up to me <laughs> by all means. If it, if it, it is to be, it is, it is up to me. Up to it me. is up to me. That's wonderful, Leslie. Yeah. Some, right. some some very good pointers, actually. I just want to add one thing is over-researching. I am noticing oh, yeah. that my patients, like, they'll go online, Google, and the doctor Google will mess up your mind. So yep. you I have to... That's, been, I, that's something uh, else I say is stick with the medical. Yes. Can because there's so many people who have said, oh, try this salted water. Oh, this cured me. Or this leaf extract from Amazon. Unless it's double-blind tested, Mm -hmm. scientifically proven i'm not i can't mess things in my body i can't my liver my heart won't take it i can't yeah be throwing odd things in there so, sorry go ahead no that's <laughs> yes. okay that's that's awesome i do have a couple of questions thank you so much leslie that was like okay. it was so, so much, much information <laughs> and and if people are wondering if people are wondering this will be posted as a live recording because people may want to go back and listen to it again because there were so many good tips there's there. so many good tips leslie absolutely yeah, yeah wonderful that's why i thought it would be great to have you because i know that you help so many people online with all those tips and, and and everything so we'll post this um on our facebook pages um it should be on preeti's um instagram page and then i'm going to try and post it to youtube as well um so look out for the link for there um i think we're going to i'm just looking at the questions that have popped up here I have You're to say thank you, Helen Pritchard. <laughs> yeah, she's she is uh, she's got lots of good comments on there. She says, You're a breath yeah. of fresh air, Leslie. Yeah. And she says she does some some Pilates um that help her and it, you know make her feel safe in that studio. So that's another good tip. Um yeah. and yet yoga for me is of some of the moves because I have other issues with my yeah. back, toast Not, for me. Yeah, so, so it's, there, it's so different for limited. everybody. Yeah, that, exactly. One question I got was, can you recommend us an exercise that's good for PPPD? Because in their country, Slovakia, um, she's having a hard time finding someone who who can work with her. Um, so the the trouble is, it's it, you know it's so individualized. Um, however, you know, I think some of the safest things to start with, Natalia, would be um, some of the kind of grounding and meditation and and um, relaxation exercises. That's somewhere to start. We know exercises with your eyes closed in a safe environment um, where you're either laying down, listening to, you know, I often will give someone, you can Google on YouTube body scan meditation. Um, and what that does is it helps to kind of reconnect your mind with your body so that you're feeling different parts of your body. Um, and there is scientific research out there that does say that that, um, that can really help with these types of conditions. So that's that's one that I would recommend starting out with for sure. And I would just add to that, just walking, you know, yeah, just going out absolutely. and walking for like five minutes, 10 minutes, and then you slowly progress 
that is going to be one of the best exercise for you. Yeah, it seems so simple. And, you simple, know, you think, oh, yeah. that's like nothing. But if you don't do it every day, it's not, um, I mean, most days, it, um, mm -hmm. you got to get used to getting out there and just moving your body, walking, like I, I often tell people, it's, it, it, it hits so many of your different senses. So it's, you know, it uses your balance sense, it uses your vision, it uses your hearing, it uses so many of your other senses, and your brain has to integrate it all. Um, and that's great practice for your brain. So, um, so that's a great mm -hmm. exercise. Another one that I was doing for a while, if I may add, yeah. is tennis against the wall. Just a tennis racket. If in some days you can, in some days you can't. And I haven't done any this summer at all. But that is excellent uh, balance, a bit of hand-eye coordination. And we're not talking John McEnroe here or anything. We're just talking hit the ball, watch it, hit the ball, watch it. Mm -hmm. And there's a little bit of bending and moving. And then you kind of literally get into the swing of it yeah. um, because you're actually out in the fresh air. You're getting a bit of exercise and it's helping your, your eyes and your body coordination. Yeah, that's that's a great exercise. That is definitely mm -hmm. a little bit more advanced for some people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But even just starting out with kind of playing catch or like with a softball or something in the house with somebody um, or about, you know, throwing a tennis ball, uh, you know, in your in your hall. That's yeah, awesome, awesome tip. Um, here's a question about um, that says I've tried dozens of medications and none have helped at all. I've tried um, VT, so vestibular therapy, five different rounds. What can I do? So that's that's tough. I mean, medication wise, like we said, it's that's kind of something between you and and specialists. Um, if you tried vestibular therapy, five different rounds, um, you know, that's a lot of times to try it and, and not have success. Um, you you just have to keep advocating for yourself and find the right provider. So um, it, it sounds like you haven't tried um, the this maybe the um, psychological therapy route. So even doing some cognitive behavioral therapy might be an option. Um, more the kind of relaxation meditation. I find that sometimes if you get over kind of too much into the vestibular therapy and you find a therapist that's really gung ho um, or even a couple of different therapists, you may just be, you know, overdoing it. Sometimes I, I get my clients and I say, okay, look at this list of 10 exercises that you're doing. I think that's just too much right now. Let's cut it down to three key exercises and then focus on you know, the rest of your time doing things that you enjoy, doing something that you like doing, like we're saying, to distract you from um, from these sensations. So, you know, focus on a couple specific exercises, but sometimes if you focus too much on this condition, uh, it has the opposite effect and kind of feeds that feeds that loop. So, so kind of trying a completely different approach is what I would recommend for you, Steve, to try to kind of go in a completely opposite direction. So I think that's all the questions that came up. But if anything I missed, I'll check the chat after and I'll respond to you. Mm -hmm. um, nothing and came up on Instagram. No, no, we don't have anything agree. on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was so great. We went definitely over our allotted time, but I knew we would because there's so much to talk about. Um, we're going to post this uh, afterwards as um, soon as we can so that people can rewatch it and get all of the great tips that we talked about. Um, again, I'm Lauren Wooten from The Virgo Therapist. I'm, if people are interested in doing some vestibular therapy with me, I um, treat exclu exclusively in Ontario, but Ontario wide. So virtual treatment um, is, is what I do for people across Ontario. And Preeti, you can tell us where people can find you. Yes, I'm Preeti Jeria, vestibular physical therapist again, and I treat patients from British Columbia and Alberta. So if you're anywhere in British Columbia and anywhere in Alberta, I can see you virtually. Uh, and I do do in person in Alberta, so in Edmonton. So if you're in Edmonton, you can just come see me in person as well. Awesome. Well, thanks, yeah, everybody. I don't know how you find me, I guess, on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. I'm on a number of... Yes. Um, of uh, vestibular pages one is called may i say this yeah uh, pppd and life is one mm -hmm. uh that's specific to pppd one is called vestibular hope mm -hmm. i think that's an ontario one and and it's just you know people collaborating and, and talking about different things that have worked for them and like i say don't you can get really sucked into these and stuck on questions but you know use it your own judgment um and the other one is uh vestibular Disorder Support Group, I think. And that one's run by VEDA, which is V-E-D-A, which is out of the United States. But that is the uh, go-to vestibular disorders association place to go to. But, and they have their own Facebook page. So. Yeah. Wonderful. I'm on there. Thank you. you can find me. 
thank you so much for joining us today, Leslie. We we're so happy that you yeah, I'm uh, glad to help. agreed to this and yes. uh, that everything worked out technically. I think everything worked out. So yeah, um, we'll yeah. see everybody yeah. next time. I think right. we'll ho hopefully thank plan you. to do another one of these in uh, in a couple of weeks. So couple of weeks. Yep. Yep. Okay. thank you so thank much, you. Leslie. Well, it was thanks great. Thanks everybody from around the world for joining. Yes, us. yes. yeah, we had a lot of proud. a lot of viewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. from everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye. 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 Okay, so I think we've ended it. Um, oh, and uh, I didn't know if she'd stay, but she's gone. Uh, and oh, there we go.